侍に嫌気がさして腰の大小を捨てた。exclamation mark it's a samurai movie that released in 1968 and it was directed by kihachi okamoto it stars the legend tatsuya nakadai and atsushi takahashi so when the genre of film becomes so oversaturated with the same tropes that you see over and over again it takes a film parody to almost make fun of all the tropes And then do some things a little different to make it fresh again. There's films that have done this, like the Good, the Bad, the Ugly. It served as a anti-Western film. It featured morally ambiguous characters who fly in the face of traditional good guy, bad guy roles. And it would seem to me that Kill serves as an anti-samurai film of sorts. In the film, there's a few signs of the Code of Honor. And the samurai, or would-be samurai in this, fights mostly just for personal motivation, like for hunger or ego. I've been aware of it. What do you mean? Samurai is a thing. I don't know. The film itself often blends together many elements of other famous samurai films, like Sanjuro or Yojimbo. When you're in the samurai community like me, oftentimes you hear certain films mentioned more than once, and Kill is definitely one of those. It's a much loved film, I could tell. For me, the first time I saw it, I remember I enjoyed it, but I didn't really think it was anything too special, and I kind of forgot about it. So viewing it this time is almost like me seeing it for the first time. And as I was watching it, it kind of reminded me of this director's other samurai film, which is titled Samurai Assassin. That film is loved too. You see it on a lot of top ten lists. But when I watch it, I really have a hard time focusing on just what's going on with the story. Kill has sort of the same problem. There's a central storyline that focuses mostly on the two main characters, and These two characters I actually like a lot. This is definitely a highlight of the film. Nakadai in this is just outstanding. I think it's definitely one of his best roles. I've never seen him play a character like this, and it's a very comedic role. But he's also sort of cynical at the same time. He's got kind of like a dark humor. Early on, we learned that he used to be a samurai and that he had a falling out with his former master. But almost until the very end of the film, we receive only slight hints as to what lies in his past and just what also motivates his actions now in the present. It's clear, though, however, that he holds no regard for his former profession. You could tell he just hated being a samurai. And for him, it's not so much the title or the rank that matters, but now just the kind of man that you are. Takahashi also gives a really great performance, and he plays this ex-farmer, and he's mostly the main source of comic relief. He's earnest, but he's also very stubborn, and at times he's kind of clueless. He actually reminded me a bit of the peasants from the film *The Hidden Fortress*, and his early fight scenes in the film are definitely among some of the funniest parts in the movie. Especially as he just tries his hardest to strike down the foe, who just nonchalantly comments on how bad his technique is. <laughs> Tata, I bought the Koshiro Daisho. 
I think his shining moment, though, is the brothel scene, which isn't as risque as it sounds. And they really need to get the foundation on this building checked. So there's definitely things like the characters in this movie and the humor that I enjoyed, but the plot is just so confusing, and I don't know if it's just me, but I really had a hard time just concentrating on it. It also doesn't help that this movie is on the longer side, it's like two hours long. I think it should have been more like 90 minutes. But maybe the confusing nature of the plot has to do sort of with the point of the film. It might be showing the chaotic nature where you have just all these different clans trying to kill each other for different reasons. And it's not just a viewer that's confused, but just the characters and the clans in this movie. They aren't completely sure on what's going on. There's powerful men that are just in the background, quietly pulling the strings. But I think overall this could have been done and illustrated in a much more satisfying way. A much more easier to understand way. Because this really would have been a classic if it just wasn't so confusing. I'm also just amazed that this is the same director that gave us the Sword of Doom. As you'll notice, the mood is just the complete opposite. So the story itself follows two ronin who were caught up in a bit of an intrigue involving a local clan. The character Genta, played by Nakadai, was a former samurai and Yakuza member. <laughs> and he just happens to witness a group of seven retainers kill their master. And on the other side is Hanji, played by Takahashi. He's an ex-farmer and novice wannabe samurai. He hopes to get into the clan's good graces, and he's brought along to hunt down the seven assassins. While Genta and Hanji are on opposite sides of the clan's convoluted back and forth, they end up forming a bond and a friendship, and they find themselves playing one side against the other. Throughout the film, we see a bunch of characters, and they vary from being hypocritical to downright disgusting. Not very likable. And besides the two main characters, the only other two likable characters are Oyakawa, the leader of the Seven, and Jurodo, the lead guard. And these two characters are just duty bound to kill one another. Yet even though they're the only characters in the film to hold to the Bushido Code when no one's looking, they were also smart enough to realize that they were trapped by the twisted machinations of Oyazawa and their own pride. The directors Kihachi Okamoto, Saijin Suzuki, and Kan Ichikawa all like to point out the hypocrisy in every system from old to new. They're basically those black pill friends that we all have. And over a career that spans over six decades, this World War II veteran director made over 40 films, many of which dealt with the absurd nature of war. He was able to merge both high action with lowbrow comedy. While previous works like Samurai Assassin and Sword of Doom saw Okamoto on his best behavior, by 1968, the real Okamoto was unleashed. Kill is his full expression. It openly and repeatedly mocks the practices of the traditional samurai. The audience point of view and the very conscience of the film is played by the Japanese legend Tatsuya Nakadai. And at this point in his career, he was no stranger to tearing down legends. While you had older legends like Toshiro Mifune who made over 30 films just building up and championing the honorific exploits of the samurai, Nakadai's cool and just collected work, and especially Masaki Kobayashi's Harakiri, single-handedly just destroys all the legends. Kill is comparatively a much more light and fun film to say Harakiri. What Kill does well is, it has exciting swordplay, it has funny dialogue, absurd humor, and just smart references to classic Chambara. Kill is a brilliant, and just fun little film. It offers interesting and complex characters, 
a story that confounds and I'll admit definitely confuses me, but maybe in the same way that 1968 just confused the world with films like 2001 The Space Odyssey and even Night of the Living Dead. If you want to include all the radical films of the 1960s, you definitely have to check out Kill. So deep down, this film is comedic, surprisingly deep, sometimes sad, and just possesses a clear message about what it truly means to be honorable. It is a credit to its genre and just one hell of an action flick. I just wish that I had an easier time understanding it. If you want the film, Criterion has it as part of the Rebel Samurai box set, which you could get on Amazon. So if you like this film and you can understand it, please let me know in the comments. If you want to discuss more films like this, be sure to check out my Discord. Also, if you want to support the channel, don't forget to check out the Patreon. And like always, thanks for watching.